the LSU Tigers. First year for Brian Kelly. He takes over a team that has talent, but, man, there were a lot of holes, and he he fixed them up during the uh, transfer season, which seems to be all the time now for whatever reason. But regardless, uh, this team went 6-7 and seven last year, lost in the bowl game. They only had like 39 players in the bowl game. It was just ridiculous. Uh, post-game win expectancy, though, six and a half wins last year in the regular season. So as bad as they were, uh, they were still able to win ball games, and that may have been based on talent alone. Six and a half wins. I mean, just unbelievable. Uh, projected SP Plus record here, six and six. Last two years have not been kind to them. SP Plus takes prior years into account. Uh, when you look at the numbers, I mean, just number 74 PPA margin, number 85 in net points per drive. Uh, they were number 88 PPA per drive on offense. The defense was number 38. Defense is what kept them in the ball games. Um, this team, as loaded as they have been at running back, Number 112 in rushing success rate last year. I mean, just putrid. Uh, they've got the number two defensive roster in the country, number three overall country in the or uh, overall roster in the country, at least per the guys over at CFB Winning Edge. There's a lot of talent here. I mean, just a bunch. You lose Eli Ricks to the transfer portal. You lose Max Johnson. You know, but they they got dudes. The new offensive coordinator. Let's start with the offense. Mike Denbrock coming over from Cincinnati. He was uh, number 56 passing rate. Uh, while Kelly had the number 35 passing rate. Which scheme are they going to run? That's what I want to know. Because I think Denbrock likes to run the ball quite a bit more. you got a three-headed quarterback battle. And likely to. We'll, we'll toss Nussmeyer out of here. But Daniels and Brennan, which one is going to run the offense? If Denbrock runs his Cincinnati offense, Daniels is going to be the guy. Otherwise, Brennan is likely the guy for Brian Kelly. Uh, depends on how much they want to pass the ball. Butte and the wide receiver core are insanely talented, but not overly experienced. Uh, the running backs, you got Emory and the Penn State transfer, Noah Kane coming in. Uh, Emory has had a multitude of issues. I mean, he was highly rated coming out of high school, but it, it's not like he doesn't have the talent to do it. He just hasn't yet. Offensive line's only got three guys returning with 300-plus snaps, none of them over 353, so that's going to be a work in progress. But again, I trust Brian Kelly with an offensive line, so we'll see. On defense, Matt House is your new defensive coordinator. He was formerly the Kentucky D.C., was the Kansas City Chiefs linebackers coach for the last three years. He's going to run a three-man front there. Defensive line got an absurd talent. Allie Gay is coming back, surprisingly, along with Smith. Uh, B.J. Ojolari is going to be more of a linebacker here as opposed to playing on the line. Uh, he had seven sacks last year. Uh, linebackers, Baskerville and Mike Jones, those guys certainly have talent. Secondary is going to be a work in progress here. You got five transfers, two back from injury, one returning starter. And the prior numbers really don't matter here uh, for any segment of this team, whether it's offense or defense, considering all the new pieces that are coming in, all of the changeover as far as the coaching staff goes. This is going to be a building year. Like that's that's the way that I feel about it. They were projected favorites in nine games. Again, that's got a lot to do with talent. Seven of the games on the schedule are toss-ups, and those are games that are projected to be within one score. And looking at the win total, uh, it sits at seven, juice to the under at minus one forty, which means that the over is plus one ten. Yeah, to win the conference, eighty to one division wide uh, division odds. Excuse me, thirty three to one. And looking at the keys to the season, like it's it's a building gear. You got to figure out who wants to be there, who wants to follow Kelly's way of doing things. Like I think seven wins would be a successful season here. Are they going to settle on one quarterback? Are they going to try and rotate Daniels and Brennan? Like, will they install a system that they would be willing to just throw out after one year? I don't think so. Like I think you're going to see whatever the offense is this year is what they're going to be running going forward. Um, there's insanely talented pieces at every position. But can they all gel in Kelly's first year? And I don't think so. I don't think they're all going to gel right away. Uh, I've got a loss to Texas A&M. I've got a loss to Alabama, at Florida, Tennessee, and at Auburn. Uh, but that gives wins over Ole Miss, wins at Arkansas. I uh, think they'll beat UAB. I think they'll beat Mississippi State. Uh, I think they're going to beat Florida State in the first game of the season. So I, I expect big things out of LSU. I don't think they're going to be great, but I think 7-5 and five is pretty good. Uh, that, once again, gets us to every single SEC West team bowling this year, which is pretty I mean, this is a ridiculous, ridiculous conference when you look at it. So, yeah, 7-5 for LSU. 
I've got them right on where the odds are. So I I do like the team, but I think it's going to be a work in progress. Uh, this team is terrifying to me going forward. But as far as this year goes, going to be a lot of feeling out. Got to get the right culture in place there, etc. Thanks for listening to the Winning Cures Everything podcast. The website is winningcureseverything.com. And if you want to connect with us, we're on Twitter at GaryWCE, at ChrisBGiannini, at Winning Cures, or you can email us, Gary at winningcureseverything.com or Chris at winningcureseverything.com. Subscribe everywhere you need to subscribe, and we'll see you soon.